Hello, namaste, good evening, uh, buonasera, bonsoir, yo steht guten Abend. Namaste, my name is Dr. Q, and I am very honored to be your host tonight again, uh, being the third workshop in a three workshop long series, which means we're reaching our culmination today. The past two workshops were building up to get us to today's workshop. And uh, today being our last session, we will recap it all, making sure that everyone's on the same level before we dive into the golden key of a self-determined life. I have uh, 25 years or so of public speaking experience. I give a lot of workshops, obviously primarily in person. And uh, so for me, giving on, uh, online workshops means I have to adjust what I'm used to in uh, delivering in person to an online setting. And I try to squeeze it all into a you know, one hour-ish setting so that you hopefully get the most out of it. We started off a month ago, believe it or not, it's a month ago already that we had our first session. And we started off talking about stress and fear. The whole purpose when I was asked to host these uh, workshops was how can I help you to deal with the stress that we currently have? And the stress obviously is based upon the current situation, the pandemic. Hence, in the first session, we realized, and it was quite important, that stress is normal. Remember, everyone had raised their hands. Stress is normal. Everyone feels stress. Me too. There is no way, no way on planet Earth that you can avoid stress. No way. Well, you could be a Zen master somewhere in a monastery up, up in the Himalayas. Maybe then you have no stress. But in a modern setting, there is stress. And stress, as we also realized, is 100% based on fear, period. If there were no fear, you wouldn't have any stress, I'm telling you. And because we're humans, we usually fear the worst. Crazy, hence stress. The, and stress and fear manifest themselves somehow in our bodies, they do. And as we established, a month ago already, it's very important to accept that there is stress and that there is fear. You might remember those of you who, who were in the, in the first session a month ago, sweaty palms, a frog in your throat, shaking hands, somehow fear manifests itself. It might not necessarily manifest itself quite easily with the stress that you might have now during the pandemic. But I am pretty sure everyone can relate to the stress and fear that you have when you are on the job. Something happens, first talk, meeting guests at the um, airport, whatever it is that, that, that brings you stress. Then you do, you can pinpoint where your stress and fear manifests itself. You can. Just be a little observant. Usually, usually a human would say, oh, well, not me. I, I look away. But if you do look at it and say, oh, there is fear, there is stress, and it manifests itself in me having shaky legs or sweaty palms, I assure you, once you consciously acknowledge it, the stress slash fear will start to fade away. That's the fastest way of overcoming it. If out of this three series workshop, you take one thing away, just one thing is, there is no objective reality. There isn't. Reality, whatever reality might be, I don't know, is created right in here. Very subjectively created. Good news is because reality is created up here, you can do something about it. And we talked about the first session, second session more, and today even more. Because what I want for you is to be able to lead a 
consciously self-determined life. Not only now during this pandemic, I try to customize and deliver this workshop or these workshops in a way that you can really use it for the rest of your lives, hopefully. I always use this as a symbol. I do not want to be a bouncy ball. I really don't. I don't want to be thrown about and be a pawn in the hands of the universe. I want to ride my horse, really. Does it mean that I don't have stress? No, I have stress. Does it mean that I have no fear? Of course I got fear. Of course. The issue is not not having it. The issue is how to overcome it. That's the issue. The faster you can get back on your horse, the easier life becomes. The faster you can overcome the current situation that you're in and the fears that you might have um, because we're in the situation. What could the fears be currently? And the stress is pretty simply put, no money. Bigger picture could be a loss of an income stream altogether. Will the company survive? Will tourism ever come back to, you know, what it was? You know, fears, you know, we usually fear the worst. Never the smallest things, but always the worst. Okay, first session, fear, stress. And then gradually, I, we were guided to realizing that we were given a gift by the universe. And the gift is up here, color, mind, or brain. It is the biggest organic search engine you can possibly imagine. It's like you're built in Google. Amazing. It is not only a search engine, but it's also a uh, experience creation engine. The more you give it, the more it wants. The more you feed it, things that baby here likes, the more it wants. Remember two weeks ago when we did the exercise, what is it that you enjoy? You wrote down 10 things and then you wrote down another 10 things and then we went back into looking into the future and you realized second time round when you wrote down how a year from now will look like, it looked so much better after you fed your brain what it is that you want because your brain wants more of the same, obviously. So we talked about your built-in Google, your built-in life creation, life experience engine, call it brain or mind. And I would say the, the foundation exercise was the blue color exercise. Remember? When you focus only on one thing, on one thing, your brain brings you whatever it is that you're looking for. In this particular case, the blue exercise. Your brain didn't see anything else, even though there, were, there is a gazillion different colors in your rooms or your apartment, living room, house, wherever you are. But if you tell your mind, find me blue, it finds you bloody blue. It does. And then when you go back and say, hey, mind, tell me all the reds. Most of us couldn't remember only not even one red item during the same exercise. My whole purpose here is to make you aware how wonderful it is, what a wonderful, powerful thing we have up there and how to utilize it. So a month ago, stress, fear leading us toward realizing that we have a built-in Google, a gigantic humanoid search engine. And we left it at that. Two weeks ago, we delved even deeper into the subject matter. It all came down to a third eye, self-responsibility, as you might remember. We talked about good news, good news being that a change comes, a change stays for a while, and then it goes away again, period, period. Nothing ever remains the same. Pantare, everything flows. You might remember Heraclitus of uh, Ephesus 2,500 years ago. That's the reason why I tattooed it in because I went through a lot of crap in my own life. And it reminds me that nothing ever remains the same. In this particular case, big change, pandemic has arrived. We're in it. And as I can tell already, and it's only two months after, it is about to go away. Things are starting to loosen up again. Change happens whether we want it or not, whether we welcome it or not. 
whether we're ready for it or not, it happens, period. From the small things, you know, hair grows, unless you go to the hairdresser, you see, a big change to last time. I was able to bribe a person to get me in, sneak me in and get me haircut, otherwise I would have had to wait till, till maybe September, I don't know. And um, so a change comes, stays for a while, and then goes away. Panta Ray, extremely important. Good times, conclusion, enjoy every minute. Not so good times, no, they will go away. And then we did an exercise, hopefully an eye-opening exercise, that people experienced a change even though in their lives there were hundreds, no, a thousand percent convinced it would remain the same, unchangeable. A huge historic thing, event, fall of communism. No one 30 some years ago ever thought it will come to an end, ever. And yet it did, remember? So change happens even if you believe that it will not happen. People do get married after all, or people do get pregnant after all, or they move to a different country after all, or whatever it is that they do, it happens. Even though you personally, in your own life, in your own situation, thought it never does. Important for me to point these things out again, because I'm gradually leading you towards the culmination of our three series on talk. And it's quite important that we're on the same level here. Gold nugget, change, comes, stays for a while, and goes again. Very important to repeat it. Repetition is a key to embracing something, to internalize it. I do this all the time. So if I do repeat, it's not because I want to bore you. It's because I want to make sure that it sinks in and hopefully at some point becomes part of your genetic makeup. So that in the future, whenever you feel stressed, whenever another big issue happens, you can hopefully deal with it a little better. We taught our mind to search for more things that we like. Important. If you ever are stressed, write down what it is that you like. And then write down double the amount of that you just written down. And then triple the amount that you just written down. The more you feed your mind, the more it's seeking more of good things that you want, good experiences that you want. Anyway, sixth chakra, indigo, is third eye and self-responsibility, a huge one that I'm a huge fan of. And I gave you a lot of personal stories. You might remember, I tried to be as authentic as possible as I think through authenticity and seeing it on a, on a real human, it might help you to embrace it also more. Now, self-responsibility, sixth chakra is, in my opinion, the most important of them all. A situation that you're in might not be your fault, but in the end, is still your responsibility how you deal with it. I gave you the example of somebody leaves a baby at your doorstep, rings the bell and runs away. Is it your fault? No, it's not. But is it your responsibility to look after that baby? Hell yeah, it is. For sure it is. There is a uh, hotel change on a tour, on a trip. Hotel change. Is it your fault? Last minute. No, it's not. But is it your responsibility? Yes, it is. So when you embrace these kind of uh, situations with it's my responsibility, so you can uh, embrace changes easier, deal with them with a more open heart and open mind because then your mind is looking for a solution as opposed to oh it's not my fault it's that person's fault it's a big difference do you know what i mean you want a an answer to question you want to resolve an issue you don't want to put blame on someone so 
as we talked about before, self-responsibility. In my opinion, amazing. This pandemic is not your fault either, is it? It's not my fault either. It's nobody's fault, if you wish. But yet, it's your responsibility how you deal with it. It's my responsibility how I deal with it. I could now be sitting in my corner, you know, crying, feeling sorry for myself, or I do something about it. What is it that you can do? We talked about that two weeks ago. So you want to utilize your time. You want to reset the mind up here to find your things that you enjoy. So it brings you more things that you enjoy during a pandemic, which is a stressful period in your life. I gave you a personal example. My father and my stepfather. They're both impacted by the revolution in Iran. Both of them. Both of them were somebodies in Iran. Yet one of them died as the eternal victim and the other passed on having led the past 30 years of his life as a self-determined consciously self-determined human being my biggest role model in my life without a doubt um so that was two weeks ago in conclusion, reality, whatever reality might be, is not something that happens outside, despite pandemics, despite financial collapse of uh, the global markets, despite uh, revolutions. It happens in here because that's how, because the reality is created by you. Your previous experiences, the mood that you're in, uh, your mindset, your emotions, you name it. Now, the good news is, and that's the reason why I'm telling you all that, is you have a say in it. You're not a victim of circumstance. You're not. You're not this. You're not. You're not. You can learn. It's a bouncy ball, Antonio. Invented in 1965. And I remember the moment my uncle, who lived, you know, I lived in Iran, who visited us, in Iran, and he gave me as a gift from the US a bouncy ball as a kid in Iran. I said, Look, that's a bouncy ball. I was like, What's a bouncy ball? And I said, like, Boom. And then it was all over the place. It had a huge impact on me, huge. And um, for 20 some years, I've been using it in my coachings as a symbol for not wanting to be one because a bouncy ball is taken, thrown away, and then in the end, you have no idea where you end up. You want to be able to ride your horse, and that's through your mind, period. There is no other way around it. <clears throat> the more you give your mind, the more it wants. And that's how we gradually come to today's session. Today, I want to share with you the golden key, if you wish, to a consciously self determined life. Consciously is very important for me, too. It just is not random. It's not doesn't happen to me. I did it. Hence, you did it. If ever in the future, ever in the future, you feel stressed, down, overwhelmed, there are several methods to come out of it. Unless, of course, it's pathological or other bigger issues. But for the most part, you can, you can, you yourself, without any medication, you yourself can pull yourself out of uh, an uncomfortable position, situation. It could be meditation that's before, you know, during when you're down, meditation might not necessarily help. It could be walks in nature because green has a very soothing impact on you. It could be listening to music. You change the wiring, the way you think about things listen to music i have on my phone a whole set of songs because not every song works every single time but i flip through them and then boom i hit the one for that day that moment that pulls me out of being stressed or being down or being sad writing down what is it gives you enjoyment which we did last time and you want to add to that list and the more you add and the more graphic you, you are, the better it is. For example, 
lick an ice cream, good, it's a good example. But um, lick in your favorite ice cream, whatever that might be, strawberry and vanilla and chocolate with sprinkle on it while walking at the beach, that becomes very graphic. You can put yourself into that. So the more you do that, the more you create future scenarios that your brain wants to experience because your brain cannot distinguish a past experience from an experience that you created in your mind. Vividly, it cannot. So I'm telling all that because we're coming to the exercise and that's when I need you, your participation, because it's all for you, really. I invest my time and energy in helping you through my own life experience. And those who've been here before know I've had one or two challenges to overcome, more than the average person, I should say, in the Western world. And I'm more than happy to share my two cents with you. Now, the golden key to a consciously self-created life is, drum roll, simple but not easy, easy but not simple, gratitude. Gratitude. It's the one thing that's the foundation and pulls you out of your misery fairly fast. Gratitude. So we will do our very first exercise and it builds up on, um, um, it's a several step exercise. So the first one is, and that's when I need your participation now, you wanna write down, you know, piece of paper, pen, and you wanna write down, and we got 90 seconds for that because uh, I need to make sure that we're done within the um, allocated time frame. You got 90 seconds to write down and there is no good or bad, right or wrong, really there isn't. It's just for you, your own benefit. 10 things, situations, anything, 10, that you are grateful for, 10. And the time has started now. Anything, really, anything, it doesn't matter. What are you grateful for now, this very, moment. What is it? Looking at Rosella could be, ah, being on this beautiful, you know, uh, chaise lounge, or is it a bed actually that you're on um, with a comfy, with a comfy, with a comfy um, pillow. So we got 40 seconds. So we still have another 50 seconds to go, so it should be enough time. Should be enough time um, to really put down 10 things that you're grateful for, 10 things. So 10 more seconds to go. And I hope by now everyone has. Okay, okay. Whoever wants to share, you can send me either a private or a public message. You can share if you want to one or two things that you're grateful for it, and i if it's a public one i'll read it out loud so that everyone else gets um, an idea what a person another person is grateful for it gives you a good um, example don't be shy just send me some um to being alive absolutely man of course it's um uh, fundamental absolutely fundamental I'm very grateful that I can breathe. I'm very grateful that I'm here being able to talk to you. Um, anything, really, but things that you want to find in uh, my cat after you sure ran away. Very good. You know, my family, family and friends. There you go. Uh, 
that I can afford buying new running shoes from a shop. Yeah, very good. Of course, absolutely. Why not? Uh, anything, really. There is no good, no bad, no right, no wrong. It's all good. Um, uh, being surrounded by the sea is also very cool. Yeah, sure. So enjoying my what? Uh, what? Enjoying this time with you while enjoying my white wine. Yes, and cheese. Good for you. Yes, why not? Being alive, happy. Okay, not uh, for the. It's a bliss. Uh, I gotta go down because there's so many messages coming in. My garden, excellent. And feeling healthy. Now, we have had enough time to write down 10 things, right? 10 things that you are grateful for. Now, I push you, I'm challenging you, and you got another 90 seconds for that, to write down 10 more things that you are grateful for. 10 more. Item, situation, anything, doesn't matter, 10 more. So at the end of the next 90 seconds, starting now, you will have 20. So you wanna focus on the 10 more, 10 more. Another one just said, you know, having a wonderful daughter that I'm proud of, having a home, having work. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You can be, uh, it could be general or it could be very specific. Either way, either way is fantastic, either way. So by the end of this, uh, the, we'll get another, you know, less than a minute or so. You want to have 20 items, 20. It's very important, 20, because I'm building you up towards hopefully understanding that you can utilize this baby up here. You can, anyone can. If I can, you can, because I'm really a, an average dude. I didn't have very special parents who taught me meditation or yoga or I don't know, we didn't do any of that. It's, I taught it to myself. Well, so we got another 20 seconds. I just want to make sure that you are at 20 at 20 by the end of the next 15 seconds. If I can do it, that's the great news, you can do it, absolutely. Okay, okay, so now we are at one minute and 30 seconds, cool. By now you should have 20, correct? 20. And if you can't write that fast, understand. So as I'm still talking, you want to you wanna finish up having 20. Uh, oh, wow, that's a cool one. Hearing the owl every morning. You see, that's something you can be grateful for. Absolutely. Having a wonderful parents. Absolutely. My coffee in the morning. Fantastic. Uh, feeling fortunate in general. Good health. My friends and family. My chocolate in the morning. The view from my house. Yes. Um, so there is a lot. Driving my car again, anything, anything goes. Now I'm pushing you a little more and you don't necessarily just wanna, uh, you wanna write down things that you're grateful for, you know? Not just uh, to please me, it's, 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 it's an exercise for you because we're gonna use whatever you write down now, later on. So I'm pushing you a little more now and I want you to write down 10 more things that you're grateful for, 10 more. And you still have 90 seconds for that, 90. So by the end of the next 90 seconds, you should have 30 situations, things, anything that you're grateful for. And it's not me here testing you. I'm here just showing you that you can expand your mind way more than you think. And the more you feed your mind, the more it wants. So the more you're grateful for, the more your mind, the universe. Oh, somebody says 10 more is pushing it. Oi, 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 oi. <laughs> it's pushing it. You really want to tell me there's only 20 things that you're grateful for in your life? I don't think so. I don't think so. For sure not. There is way more than 20 things that you're grateful for. I assure you. I guarantee you. Guarantee you. When I do this um, in live sessions, either as a workshop or one-on-ones, I push them to 100. 
or more, depending on you know who the, who the what the group is or who the person is. Just to prove my point that you can expand your mind, you can. To be fit, to be able to see the world, excellent. Yes, thank you, Rosella. Yes, of course. So you got five more seconds and then we are done. By now, folks, by now, you should have 30, 30. And again, there is no good or bad, right or wrong, first, that was first, I won, no, none of that. It's for you. Things that you're really grateful for. Now that's what I do regularly. And because there is no gym, there is no yoga studio and stuff, I have been jogging every single day. And every single day when I jog, or rather trot, because I'm, what can I say, not as fit as I used to be uh, until my heart issue seven years ago. I really never recovered from it. So it's more a trotting of an old man. That's uh, to be precise rather than um, a jog. What I do when I jog, and that's an exercise for you too, what you wanna do now, and I hope you have enough space wherever you are because you need to walk a little bit. You can change the way you feel physically by being grateful physically, not just writing it down. We'll combine all that in a, in, in a minute or two. But what I do is I do a so-called thank you walk. Thank you. So every time I jog, I sometimes fall into a trance, semi-trance, and I say thank you. One step, thank, second step, you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What I want you to do, what I want you to do, and it's important that you observe yourself. I cannot see you because uh, you know, there's way too many people in this call, and um, so you have really privacy anyway. Uh, and you're not being recorded, so uh, no stress. What I want you to do is, I want you, I give you 90 seconds, and again, I apologize having to cram it on to a short time, but it's, for, it's a teaser for you to then experience later on longer, but at least you know what I'm talking about. So for 90 seconds, what I want you to do, like literally, physically, you want to walk around, as soon as I say now, you got 90 seconds, you want to walk around either in a circle or just zigzag through your room, and every time you step one step down, you say, thank the second foot, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And observe how you feel when you do it. So all you need to do is just physically, literally either out loud or internally, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. So if you're ready, we got 90 seconds to do so. And then please come back again from now thank you walk it's called the thank you walk just walk around and all you need to do is just observe yourself how you feel as you're doing it thank you thank you thank you you can do so when you jog you know or trot in my case but when i was younger and i could uh, actually jog i did it too running fairly a lot faster than i can do now so it's just a thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Exercise. And observe how you feel doing it and how things start shifting in your body, in your mind, because all you're doing is saying thank you. And we still have another min half a minute to go. And I assure you, because I've done it, you can do so for an hour, guaranteed. An hour. All you're doing is saying thank you. We've got 20 more seconds to go. 20 more, in case you can hear me. 20 more seconds to go. We've got five more seconds to go, five more seconds, three, two, one, and please be so kind and return.
Awesome. Good. People are coming back. You know, it's too many people in this call. I, I only see a select few. You can share. It's quite, you know, how did it feel? Be honest with yourself. How did you feel? Apart from saying, ah, oh, I felt stupid doing it. But how did you really feel doing it? You can, you can unmute yourself or you can just text me maybe faster um, and, and tell, share with me. What did you experience a shift? Did you feel a shift in your body, in your emotions? So somebody says um, he feels a little funny, I guess, more relaxed, manifesting intention through body. Mm -hmm. Cool. Then uh, brings a smile. Mm -hmm. A few things. There is again no right or wrong. I felt more energetic and happy. Uh, it was good just having a physical exercise. Sure it is, of course it is, why not, you know? Getting you uh, off the chair and um, full of purpose. We use it um, for the walk in June, whenever, whatever walk that might be, worries go away. Now what the, the thank you exercise is, it's twofold. One is because we had, had quite many emails and, and uh, messages after my first session about meditation. Meditation seems to be like a, a magic word that um, scares some people. If you do the thank you walk, that's meditation too. Because all you're doing is you're focusing, you're forcing to your mind to just focus on a certain thing. So everything else falls away. Oh, you're doing a half marathon. Um, good, excellent, Pam. So I shall keep my fingers crossed for you. What it does is you focus on one thing. Nothing else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It quietens your mind. Worries go away. It's liberating. Very liberating. It's meditation, believe it or not. It's a walking meditation. <clears throat> and it's a gratitude exercise. Gratitude. It's, I think, the most powerful, most impactful, and fastest way of shifting how you feel. Gratitude. If you're stressed, angry, upset, whatever and then you start being grateful for what you have oh my god it shifts your mind very fast and the more gratitude you tell yourself the more your mind wants to experience it i told you mm -hmm. it's like give me more 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 so what i created for myself you know i, I play these mind games if you wish i'm like a self-exploration junkie um, the, I just want to know how can I do things with my mind. I, I um, did a lot of crazy things, you know, jungles and this and the other. I just want to know, is it possible? Can I train my mind to do X? Can I overcome something just by the way I think? So I created these, this little game too in my mind. I, mommy, daddy didn't help me. Mm. What I do is... And again, I told you 10 years ago, I went bankrupt, you know, terrible. It was a horrific issue. Uh, but I told myself in the middle of the stress, oh, I'm going to create something that's even better, less stressful, more money, easier, more enjoyable. So what I did is I did my thank you walk by utilizing things that I'm grateful for in the middle of a crisis, in the middle like stress through times a thousand stress, huge stress, losing everything. What I would want you to do, please, is if you can pick, and for this you got another 90 seconds because I want you to really think about it. I want you to please pick, let's say the three, the three things that you are most grateful for out of the list that you've just written. So you have a, a list of 30, and now I want you to pick the three that you're most grateful for. And if now me telling you this, so we start now, if not, as of now you've got 90 seconds, because I want you to think about it really, not just put it on your armpits and write something down, I want you to really write something down, that's important. And if you just 
realized, oh, I actually uh, forgot to write down this. That's like, I'm super grateful for, but I haven't put it in my list of 30 before. Then you use a new item, that's okay too. But I want the list containing three things that you are most grateful for, like deep down, deep down. It's important to you, really important. It could be um, the, the kids that you have or the partner that you have or where you live or your health or your good looks. You know, if you're an Italian, you know, obviously I can see that one of them is like, look at me, dude, I'm a, I'm a model. Well then, if that's what you're most grateful for, perfect, go for that. And, but it, I, 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 I'm joking around here, but I truly mean it. So it's, it needs to be something that's big, right? Big. And uh, you put down, you know, circle those three things in, or you put them on a separate list, those three items that you're most grateful for. Okay. So we've got five more seconds. And that's it. Is there anyone who doesn't have the three things that are really grateful for? You just send a chat and I can wait another, you know, uh, 10, 20 seconds. We already talked about this before. Our mind cannot, it's been tested, you know, it's tested, cannot distinguish reality, whatever reality is, you know, remember, from something that's created in your mind. It cannot. If it's graphic enough, tangible enough, it cannot distinguish. So it's a, it's a, it's a gift that I'm giving you that you can utilize. Now we have a list of the three things that you're most grateful for. Obviously, you know, when you do this exercise later on, you can come up with a different list. That's okay too, because I know we don't have enough time now. What I now want you to do is on a separate list, write down three realities that you would like to be grateful for in the future. Do you understand the question? Three things that you would like to be grateful for, but obviously don't have now. So 10 years ago, more 11 years ago, I went bankrupt. Like I lost everything. I had a big company, big. So what is the one thing that I wrote down then? Obviously money, obviously. Seven years ago, tubes down my throat in the intensive care unit. I played the game too. I did. Of course I did. I could have died, but I'm here, you know, for whatever reason. So I can talk to you maybe. The game was obviously the number one was health. Me focusing on being able to jog because I enjoy that. To do yoga, in, uh, specifically Bikram yoga. I like that. I love the sweat. So I was picturing me doing the Bikram yoga and me jogging in the forest again, because I like that too. So these are the three, well, two examples that I just gave you. Something that you would like to be grateful for in the future. It could be within the time limit of one year, if you wish, if you want it to be done fast. Um, so something that you want to be grateful for. Three things. And I can give you another minute because it's important. I don't want you to just pull it out of your armpits and you know, create something. Uh, then um, I don't quite understand, Pam, what do you mean by if they are the same, the same what? That you're already grateful for and you just want to continue being grateful for or what? Same as today? I still don't understand the question, sorry. Um, so we're going to have a minute to go. I want to make sure that you really put down three things that you want to be grateful for in the future. When you then look back, like in my case, I'm super grateful for, I can jog, 
Is it the same jogging as it was before my heart issue? No, it's not, by far not. But when I jog, I'm grateful that I can jog. I mean, it's more trotting of an old man, but I'm very grateful that I can do that. Because seven years ago, it could have been Asala Baba altogether. Uh, so I'm grateful, super happy. When I do Bikram, man, I'm like, oh my gosh, it, it's not the same, I'm not, not the same as all, but I'm grateful, same thing I'm grateful today, I want in 10 years time the same. No, we want something new, something not the same because you're already grateful for it now, we want some, if indeed there is something you can, if indeed, if there is nothing and you're super happy enough, then, um, all good so either way it's an exercise you might not be in a position where you are looking for something to be grateful for because you are in a period of zen in your life can be too it happens also to me you know life is a constant up and down sometimes you need mega change for the better sometimes you want to say oh my gosh if it stayed the same it would be wonderful so I understand. So everyone has a list of three things they want to be grateful for in the future. And people send me, you know, losing weight and better connection with my siblings and, you know, this, that, the other. It's all, but there is no good or bad, no right or wrong. The way I do it, because I know mind cannot distinguish an actual happening from a, something that I created. I know so, because people much smarter than I am have already figured that out. And it's being used in uh, um, like professional athletes, like professional sports, it's being used already. They have all these athletes do whatever it is that they're doing in their mind. Not in reality. I don't know if they're runners or whatever they are. Just in their mind. And they can test, they can tell you that their brain reacts the same way as if they were doing it for real. That's awesome to know. Awesome. Because that's how I came up with this little game that I played with myself. So the three things that you are currently grateful for. Remember before? So out of these and I have to compress it to be able to talk about all of that in a short period of time. So the three things that you are already now grateful for. Do you have that on one piece of paper, on a separate piece of paper? If not, please do it now. So the three things that you are already now grateful for, one piece of paper. And then out of the three items, that you would like to be grateful for in the future, you circle in one. The one that's the most important to you out of those three. And again, I'm compressing it because we don't have much time. But in the future, you can play the game and I'm more than happy to um, answer your questions later. So one item, one. So we brought it down to one that you want to be grateful for in the future, correct? So what you're going to do, what I'm doing too, is when you do your gratitude walk, your thank you walk, because we're going to repeat the thank you walk. When you do the thank you for the next 90 seconds, and then you, you can ex compare. Thank you, thank you. So I say... Thank you, thank you for um, my health. That's one of my top three. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my mother. Top three, thank you, for my, thank you for my brother. So I used three, randomly chosen three, that I am most grateful for. Okay, it's important. And then the fourth one, thank you for my future husband, future wife. Thank you for whatever is it that's your number one. Do you know what I mean? Your mind cannot distinguish 
something that you have from something that you would want to have cannot because you're saying it you're tricking your mind you're saying thank you thank you thank you thank you for what i have for what i have for what i have and thank you for the next one and then you go back and say thank you thank you thank you for the things in your head and then thank you for the new thing and that's how you do it for 90 seconds i play this game for an hour but for now let's start 90 seconds you want to walk around and feel safe it's a safe environment and and observe yourself how you feel we start now as you got 90 seconds you want to walk around three things that you're grateful for now and you weave in the fourth the one that you want to be grateful for in a year from now for example or whenever that is rosella doesn't trust me but okay you can do so i know it looks so comfy i know i won't i don't blame you i would do the same thing i would just hang back would have a glass of wine it would be you know all good maybe some chocolate with it mm yummy yummy i don't blame you so we have another 50 seconds so half the time is over thank you for my health thank you from a mother thank you from a brother thank you for a secure income thank you for my job thank you whatever it is that you want to see in the future you weave it in and i guarantee you your brain cannot distinguish cannot you're tricking it i know we're such naughty naughty people tricking our minds but it does work and when you go into the future you really just want to focus your mind on one max two three and it gets a little iffy by then so we're done you can come back i'm compressing it condensing it into the time that we have together but you can play this game for a long time and i personally have played it for i don't know hours 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 i would say maybe hundreds of hours jogging you know, over the past 20 years for a long long time but the importance is that the list cannot be too long it gets watered down and it doesn't really work hence i said three top things and out of the three we chose one you can do the three things that you want to have in the future and weave it into your list of um, whatever you're grateful for now you can you can expand the three things that we did now to 10 that you're currently grateful for when you do your walk i do it too you know i sometimes have used 50 things that i'm grateful for as i do my little trotting jogging and then i weave into it one or two things that i would like to be grateful for in the future and i guarantee you your mind cannot distinguish so what does your mind do remember the blue exercise i'm trying to prove to you what i'm telling you so you don't have to believe me but i'm trying to create a workshop exercises that you can test now now so what did the blue exercise show you if you tell your mind do x your mind does it period so if you tell your mind i want to be grateful for the one thing in the future having a husband having a wife having a home having more money um, a healthy body it brings it to you it does again i'm a cancer survivor i'm a huge heart virus you know crazy thing survivor i survived um, complete financial collapse complete uh, we even survived the revolution it's possible i assure you, if i can do it you can do it um, cuz i'm more or less just a talking head but um looking at this beautiful handsome italian stallion eating enjoying life he can do it for sure and he's smiling at least <laughs> so 
Anyway, it is called the gratitude walk. It's called the thank you walk. And if you don't go on walks, if you're not a jogger, that's fine too. Or you, you can do it so when you get up in the morning, you know, when you go to the bathroom in the morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, be more wise. Um, yeah, there are so many things um, that you can uh, train your mind, ask your mind to bring you in the future. How are you guys doing? I would love to hear how you feel. You can say, well, it was a complete nonsense. I understand, I'm not here to say that it's uh, the ultimate wisdom, but it's something that helps me. And I know that it helped quite a few people before too. So I hope that it will help you as well. <clears throat> she, somebody's calmer, feels more was very nice. Somebody's 100% with me, very good, with you all, excellent. Now I wanna give enough time for questions and answers too, of course, because um, uh, it's our last session. And um, the um, one little tool that I use and which you can use, utilize uh, right away, also for your trips when you run a program, I call it pre-paving. I know it sounds a little crazy, but as I told you, your mind cannot distinguish reality, whatever reality it might be, from something that you created in your mind. It cannot. If you do it well, obviously. If you don't believe it is blah, blah, then of course your mind doesn't believe it either, and it's, so it's not the same. But if you do it as if you were an athlete, let's say you're... Um, a runner, you know, track and field, whatever, and they run the race in their mind, they try to be in their mind as good as in reality. So that's, they're emulating reality, whatever that is, in their mind, okay? That's the reason why the body cannot distinguish the actual running from the mind running, cannot. Or uh, Formula One drivers, maybe. They do it too, I assure you. They do it up there. Ski racers, anything, doesn't matter. They do it. And they can come within a tenth of a second of the actual race time. That's amazing. So what I'm, what I'm doing, you know, sometimes I don't need it and sometimes I do need it. So I don't do it all the time. But sometimes when it's important, then I do a so-called pre-paving. Pre-paving literally means I pave something before I get there, hence a prepaid. So let's say um, for a trip, or this, I, I, let's just use this one so it's easier. I prepaved the outcome of this workshop for you. So I put myself in this chair, looking at the screen, having a bunch of people, listening to what I'm saying, and them nodding and smiling, and them getting it. I visualize it so that my time is not wasted, and your time, which is even more important, is not wasted either. So it's a win-win. By doing so, I jacked up my own energies, to be as authentic as possible, as loving and giving as possible, and you being as receiving as possible, so both parties, all parties win. Let's use a, an example that any one of us uh, can uh, relate to. The outcome of a trip, or the outcome of a uh, which I used to more than I do now, of um, questionnaires. Pre-paving the night before how the group of 48 will receive me handing out 
the evaluations. So through, in my mind, I went through every single person by name, saying, Peter, thank you for your evaluation, and John, Sally, and visualized them, writing it down, with saying top marks, thank you so much. It takes time, it's not easy, I understand that, you gotta practice it. So it's quite a complex scenario, but you can practice smaller things. What is it that you wanna see become reality and create it in your mind? But it needs to be really um, graphic, not just small and you know, oh, I want this outcome and that's it. No, 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 you really gotta spend time creating a scenario, describing it, being as complete as you possibly can. You must. How does the, our coach look from the inside? The name of the driver, you see the driver sitting, the coach captain, you know, color of the seats, all of that. And then you need to remember each, each passenger, each guest, and so forth. And the better you can do it, the better the result is. And it can be for anything, really doesn't really matter. If indeed you picture shaking hands, saying, oh, thank you, you hear from the other person saying, thank you, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and you picturing, visualizing how happy you are hearing that the other person is happy. Beautiful, I'm telling you, beautiful. It just helps you. I mean, you cannot do anything beforehand and then do pre-paving and then think, oh, done. No way, it doesn't work like that. Any top athlete still trains six, eight hours a day and they do the pre-paving. Do you know what I mean? You gotta do something beforehand, otherwise you can't create anything. So it helps you to um, make or create a future that you like if indeed you've invested the energy beforehand. If there is nothing that you've invested before, obviously there is nothing you can do to create. Well, there is, because you can create something out of the blue too, but this might get a little too deep into the rabbit hole. Um, so I shared with you the pre-paving. I shared with you my secret gratitude walk. Thank you, walk. And um, I hope it was entertaining and, um, and useful for you. I'd be more than um, happy to receive your feedback, you know, suggestions. Uh, my email is drq at drqmod.com, but it will be on the video in the beginning of the end. So it's pretty simple. Many of you have my contact information anyway. You can WhatsApp me or Facebook me or whatever. Uh, but before we say bye-bye, I of course want to make sure that you're being heard. And if you have questions about anything with it today or last time or two times before, don't be shy. I'm here to answer as best as I can. Um, and, uh, and just be there for you. Would I have the answers or anything? Maybe not, but at least I try. Don't, you can also unmute yourself, but not all of us, because there's quite many people in this call now. Um, so someone says, Mr. AB says, grazie mille. Mm, I say, thank you so much, Sandra. But you can, um, if you have an actual question, we have the open Q&A time. Um, and if you're already bored and want to go home or just have a, a vino rosso or vino bianco, then I understand that too, if there are no questions. But you can always reach me, and quite many of you have sent me emails and messages, and I responded to every one of them, by the way. It might take me a day or two, but I do respond to everyone uh, uh, indeed. No questions, it seems. Well, then uh, I what I'll do is... I'll have us all in here um, so we can uh, do the big uh, wavy wavy to those of you might remember um, during the pandemic what I do with my little kids here. Uh, we do the snails greeting, so we, we're not supposed to hug and kiss, so we did you know, the snails greeting. But uh, being uh, half Viennese and living in, in Budapest, the little cheeks, uh, kisses on the cheek is. Uh, Bussi in German, you know, B-U-S-S-I, Bussi, or even uh, 
not here in Hungarian is pussy. Believe it or not, small pecks in the cheek is pussy. Uh, and uh, so I say, I'll send everyone a, a big pussy. You can, of course, unmute yourself and we can all say bye bye. And uh, I can thank you. Now, so we can all say thank you, thank that's you it. for being yeah. here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, time. It. Vini Vini Vici, yes, he is thank the man. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> And it was wonderful having Mark, Jeannie, you. Where's, where's the dog? I miss the dog. Um, I actually, I miss it's the dog okay. here. I got, I got to have puppy Alsatians. Bye. Bye. <laughs> thank bye. you, thank you, thank you for your time, bye. for being here. Bye. It's a pleasure. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Really appreciate it. Any questions, you know how you can reach me. Ciao. Take care. Ciao. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.